Okay, so before we get into our library hall, say hello to Frederick. He is supervising my videos today. Um, we're going to start just at the top and go to the bottom because I'm just going to go with what I have here. So the first one I got from the library this month was Finley Donovan Rolls the Dice. This is the latest in the Finley series. I am 80 pages in. I am absolutely loving this. I am was looking for all the campy uh, murder mysteries that I get my hands on. If you've never heard the series, this series follows Finley. Finley is a newly single mother who is trying to make it. She is in a Panera, I think. And I know it's Panera because I read the... Anyways, she's in a Panera bread location talking to her publisher about her latest book and what the events are going to happen and how she's having trouble writing it and everything. The woman behind her happens to overhear and thinks that she is a murder for hire and pays Finley to murder her husband. And in events that are completely out of Finley's control, she does end up murdering or she ends up with his dead body. And now she has to figure out how to get rid of the body, who killed him, and like how to figure this all out. This is the fourth book of this series. And the it just keeps getting wackier and crazier. And Finley keeps getting herself into more and more situations that I, one human shouldn't be able to get into. And I love every minute of it. Um, this one is following Finley and their babysitter Vera as they are going to Atlantic City because of reasons disposed in the last three books. Um, and I'm enjoying this immensely. Next, I picked up Akata Woman. This is the final in the Akata Witch trilogy. I've read the first two this year. I want to get this one read. I am physically reading it. I'm only like four pages in because I got it from the library. Set in the, the um, parking lot. There's a word I'm looking for. Um, to figure out what I wanted to pick up first. And something else won over this one. But I have it and I'm excited to read this. This follows Sunny. Sunny is a... Uh, albino Nigerian living in Nigeria who learns that she is a leper person, meaning she has magic. Um, her magic, her albinism offers her extra abilities. And in this world, if you have a disability, your disability actually gives you extra powers and it can lead, lend itself to whatever power you have. Sunny's is that she is in both the physical and the spirit realm. She can travel back and forth without being deceased. And usually you have to be deceased to travel back and forth. Um, and shit happens, obviously. In the first one, they are trying to stop another magic user from bringing an even worse black magic user into existence. And they have to stop that. And now we're at the third one and I can't really tell you anything more because I don't want to spoil it. Next, I have one that I know nothing about. The cover is why I checked it out from the library and this is why I love the library. That is Where Sleeping Girls Lie. Look at that cover. It was on my recently re new, re or new releases or new purchases at the library and they had it sitting out like this. That cover just made me check it out. I think it's a murder mystery. I don't know. It says, It's like I kept stumbling into a dark room, searching for the for the switch to make things bright again. That's all I know. Um, and I think this is a schoolhouse. I think. Um, it's an African American young girl with a bird for an eye and a, what looks like a schoolhouse down here. That's all I needed to know. I checked it out. I'm excited to give it a try. I don't know what I'm going to get myself into, but I will let you know when I give it a try. Next, I got one that I'm really excited about. I was happy to see that was there. That is The Teacher by Frida McFadden. This one, I have no clue what it's about. It's a Frida book, meaning it is a mystery thriller. And it probably is going to have a twist like this far in that I'm not going to see coming and I'm okay with that and that's all I need to know. I am just here for the vibes when it comes to Frida. At this point I have read 
seven of her books that she's put out this year and I have enjoyed them all. Uh, there was only one that I have given less than a four star so I'm giving this a try. It does say on the back that lesson number one, trust no one. Eve has a good life. She gets up each day, gets a kiss from her husband, and heads off to teach math at the local high school. All of that, all is, all is as it should be, except last year, Kingsman High ha was rocked by a scandal with one student, Addie, at its center. This year, Eve is dismayed to find the girl in her class. Addie can't be trusted. She lies, she hurts people, she destroys lives. At least that's what everyone says. But nobody knows the real Addie. Nobody knows the secrets that could destroy her if people at school, at the school found out. And, and when Eve discovers the shocking truth, Addie will do nothing, will do anything to keep her quiet. Holy mess. Okay, I'm down. I want to read. I'm happy to read. Next. There's a little bit of story behind this one. So your girl thought she was checking out the final book in the Lane Taylor series, uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, which is God and Monsters. But instead, what was on the shelf when I walked over there and I went ahead and checked it out because I want to finish the series too, was God and Monsters by Shelby Moran, which is the final in the, why am I brain just, Serpent, Serpent and Dove trilogy. I still want to finish it. Um, it wasn't as pressing as the Daughter of Smoke and Bone, but it's fine. Um, this series is a witch and a witch hunter falling in love. Um, I did not get the hype as much on this series. I think I gave Serpent and Dove five stars. And then maybe I gave Blood and Honey like three, three or four. Um, I've been really generous with my stars. That's coming to an end. FYI. Um, but yeah, I want to finish the series. It's a little thicker than what I was wanting to get myself into. But we shall see. Um... This one is over 600 pages. It is six. Look. It's 612. 612 pages. So not too terrible, but also not terribly good either. So yeah. Um, next, I picked up one that I am a little hesitant to physically read. Because the rest of the series I have listened to. A lot of these I've listened to audibly and never picked up physically. And that is the case with the Dark Olympus series by Katie Roberts. This is Cruel Seduction, which is the sixth question mark of the series. I absolutely love Katie Roberts' writing. I have read all of the Wicked Villain series. Beast is my favorite. Um, and I genuinely, truly enjoy reading her romance and her smutty books and not only are they smutty in their romance and they're good they she also writes damn good plot and political political scheming like they have everything i want in a book um and i just have always listened to them i listened to radiant sin and now i have cruel seduction in physical form and i'm a little nervous that i won't love it as much if i'm not hearing about it so i'm excited to get into this and see what i think if I find out that physical is not for me, then I will put my hold in at the library and just wait the year that it says it will take for me to get this and read it. And then next to last, I have one that was on my most anticipated releases and I never got around to it. I know that everyone think has uh, praise for, oh, her other one. Does it tell me? No, it does not. Nope, 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 nope. Um, her other one that she wrote was Once in Future Witches. Everyone talks about that highly. And so now I have The Sterling House. I believe it's a haunted... I finally got it. Sorry, there's a cat hair on my nose. It was driving me crazy. Um, I want to say this is a haunted house story, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I picked it up because I had read the synopsis at one time, really, really wanted to read it. And so here we are. I am one of those girls who likes to go into a book completely blind if I can. I started Crave completely blind and absolutely fucking ate it up and loved every minute of it because I w it was blind. I had no clue what was going on. I was as blind as Grace was and I loved that. So we're going in, I am 100% for going into books 
blind with just vibes. This vibe is Haunted House, I think. And I'm fine with that. I'm down for it. It's not very long. The pages are pretty big. Like, the, the text is pretty big. And there's pictures. There, There's a picture. Um, There's actually a couple pictures in here that I didn't realize. Uh, hold on. Let's look at the one. Look at this. There's, like, illustrations. I'm down for this. Yeah. Completely down. Um, yeah. So I checked that one out as well. And then lastly of my library books is one I've already finished and I meant to film this video before I finished it but she's short and the library hole came in and so here we are. That is What Feast at Night um, by TK and Fisher. This is the sequel to What Moves the Dead. They are tiny little books. This is less, this is a little over 150 pages all together with the acknowledgements and everything. So this follows the soldier from what moves the what moves the dead um and alex is headed back home they are getting ready getting their hunting cabin ready for mrs why can't i remember her name the macologist from the first book it does not tell me um, she, or Alex is getting the hunting cabin ready for my colleagues from the first book at the house of Usher, um, to come and stay with them while they do, uh, research on the mushrooms and fungi of their home country and stumbles upon another, psych not, not psychological, paranormal kind of, um, speculative so it's another one of those paranormal speculative kind of horror and i love this i'm giving this five stars um it was fascinating and i would love to read more about uh easton and what they get into and just what is all going on i think that there are conversations of a little, I want to say trans, but she's not, I don't want to get the term wrong. Um, Alex talks about how when the, her companion that's, or the, I'm going to try this again. Alex talks about when Agnet, or uh, Angus, there it is. Uh, when Angus comes to them, how they had a whole new set of pronouns and that they were a soldier but since we're is told from alex's point of view we don't know what those pronouns are um we know that she or see that they are female born but i want to say they go by they them pronouns now instead of the other so yeah this one was so good but there you have it there's everything i read i checked out from the library this this month. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you on my next one.